The National Center on Improving Literacy presents an Ask an Expert video series, Vision Impairment and Dyslexia. We asked Marnay Lofton, retired psychologist from the Texas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired, what are some signs a student with visual impairment may need an evaluation for specific reading disabilities, including dyslexia? Many of the signs that indicate that there is a need for an evaluation for dyslexia are the very same that you will see in students with vision. Uh, these are children that really have a lack of understanding of sounds and syllables, regardless of the different ways that they're presented in a multimedia. Um, children who are unable to decode even very, very simple words um, like cat, had determining those uh, basic reading primer words. Um, the other thing that is very true is they always seem to have difficulty with rhyming words. Oftentimes they will not even have the understanding that these are uh, the whole process of rhyming. You know, they will give you something that may be related in some other way, but not at all to the rhyming process. And I think finally, it's a behavior as much as anything, is these children who really don't have a lot of interest in learning to read, they're delighted to have mom or dad sit down and read a book to them, but very little interest in what does this word say, you know, um, helping to differentiate between those words. Those are all early signs, I think, of difficulty. We use those as pretty simple criteria for referring for an additional evaluation, sometimes by a school psychologist and sometimes by a speech and language person to see what might be going on. As they got older, it was sometimes a little bit more subtle to determine that there was a need. Um, as I've said before, the good memory of children with visual impairment is often a complicating factor in determining that early readers need, need further, further evaluation. As they get older, you will see that their reading becomes slower and more labeled. Um, multiple starts and stops, you know, they will go backwards. Some of it with Braille readers may be related to the Braille code and trying to determine the contextual clues. But most of the time, it's just rubbing. Uh, what we refer to as scrubbing, where they're, they're reading a word over and over again, trying to decode what it actually means. Um, a struggling reader in the upper grades is going to omit words, is going to add additional sounds and, and uh, uh, syllables for no apparent meaning. Uh, the passages are read without really much concern for comprehension. So they will read the passage without really listening and determining, does this word make any sense in this context? You know, their whole goal seems to be to get through the passage and not to really read for understanding. Um, and a final category that you see a lot with high school students is that all they're doing is concentrating on simply reading that word. You know, they don't have any energy left for comprehension. They're getting through it, but that's just about all they are. I think one of the sad parts that is, to me, a good indicator of struggling readers is that behavior frequently starts to emerge. As we said with the younger students, you often see have hesitancy in wanting to learn the words, learn to read, etc. just minimal interest in it. Um, older students, there will be tremendous hesitation about reading aloud. Uh, they will come up with every possible excuse as to why they're not the person that should be reading aloud in the class. They dislike and they're frustrated by reading in all environments. Um, you know, if you ask a struggling reader to help you read a recipe for their favorite recipe, um, they may be more agreeable to reading it, but they're still very, very hesitant, particularly if there's other people around. They're easily frustrated by reading. If you sit down and try to help give them clues about what a word might mean, they are apt to give up, you know, say you do it, etc. There's not much tolerance for developing new skills. And sadly, I think the worst thing is to see children 
that start to engage in disruptive and off-task behavior when they're reading. You see the class clowns, you see the ones that are popping up out of their desk, going to get another piece of equipment, et cetera. Um, I really encourage people to look at this kind of non-compliant behavior in the classroom to see what relationship it has to the reading task at hand. Is it a task avoidance behavior or is it a non-compliant behavior? Treating it as a non-compliant behavior will not have any success at all. We need to work on the root cause and developing some skills for that child. This video is funded by a grant to the National Center on Improving Literacy from the Office of Elementary and Secondary Education in partnership with the Office of Special Education Programs. Award number S283D160003. The opinions or policies expressed are those of the authors and do not represent views of OESE, OSEP, or the U.S. Department of Education. You should not assume endorsement by the federal government. Copyright 2021 National Center on Improving Literacy.